time. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made, and we do have a choice to rejoice. Even when you feel miserable. Even when the spirit of oppression tries to attack you. You have a choice. You can pull out the sword, cut its head off, get rid of it, or you can run. It's more fun to cut off the head, though. I mean, you know, it is the eternal sport. Would you turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5? <laughs> we ought to do a teaching on the eternal sport. <laughs> that ought to rock the religious system. <laughs> Glory. Second Corinthians 5 verse 12. Is everybody there? Yeah. Let's speak it together. For we do not commend ourselves again to you to give you opportunity to boast on our behalf, that you may have an answer for those who boast in appearance and not in heart. For if we are besides ourselves, it is for God, or if we are of sound mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ compels us because we judge this, that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves. No longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. I want to grab something here because it says that no longer living for yourself, but living for him. And that means there's something that he's requiring me and you to, do, to partake of. It's an area of partaking. In this, he says, <clears throat> for, the, uh, for the love of, uh, and, and he died, where the heck did I go? Therefore, from now on, verse, hello, 16, thank you. Therefore, from now on, we what? We regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that takes cooperation, doesn't it? To no longer live for yourself and live for him takes cooperation. That is called, without cooperation, you cannot partake. Amen? So a lot of people are trying to partake without cooperation. So they want God to do all these things when they're not willing to cooperate with what he's asking them to do already. And you're never going to know what he's asking you to do until you finally get into fellowship, read the word, and know what God is asking you to do. Or you'll never partake. Amen? Oh, happy days. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. Why? Because of cooperation, you are now partaking in new. You are partaking now as an eternal partaker. Everyone say, I'm an eternal partaker. Now, it is a person who consumes, indulges, and delights and cooperates. It's a person who consumes, indulges, and delights cooperates and joins in the activities of the eternal presence. Everything associated with the eternal kingdom. So to be an eternal partaker, to partake means you consume. Amen? You indulge. You delight. You desire to cooperate. You are joined in the activities of heaven, the eternal realm, as eternal partakers. So if we're eternal partakers, it means we are timeless partakers, aren't we? Amen. Because the world is bound in time, and we're not. See, that's what keeps us. 
knowing that everything here is temporary. So we're not building on temporary things. We're building on eternal things. Everything is bound by time, but we're timeless. And we've talked about this already. Is everybody okay? Let's go a little further. Verse 18. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So what our purpose is is to get people out of the deception and captivity of the world and bring them the, into the eternal where they can become a eternal partakers themselves. Because see, people are either a worldly partaker or eternal partaker. There is no compromise. It's one or the other. And when you begin to compromise, if you're an eternal partaker and begin to a, become a worldly partaker, you will contaminate everything. Amen? Verse 19, that is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. That is our mission. Amen? But God does something first. He trains us up. The problem is that people aren't willing to get trained. They reject the training. Verse 20, now then we are what? ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us that we might become righteousness, the righteousness of God in him. Again, as eternal partakers we are involved in a timeless realm. Amen? Well, the world is bound by time. So either individuals are partakers of the timeless realm, the eternal, or the temporary. And the more you partake of the temporary, the more you are distant from the eternal. And you don't know what moment or what time, what day, what second, something may happen to you. And the next thing you know, you didn't get that extra last breath to say, forgive me and get home. Amen? So we no longer live for ourselves, we live for him. That's where the question comes into us all the time. Do you live for him every day? Or do you live for you every day? And what do you live for? See, we're to be living for him and we're to be living for his glory. We are just sojourners here. We're no longer citizens. We're temporary citizens. But our citizenship is eternal in a timeless realm. See, people are so caught up in now and today that they lose sight that there's a place that's waiting for you that's forever. And that's what should keep me and you going. Knowing that no matter what we're going through, we're not building on the things of today and the materials of today. We're building on everything for tomorrow, our future. Amen? Our purpose in, is in life today is to bring in as many people as possible before this time shuts. Because if they're caught in the time that shuts... They're lost forever. They will never access the timeless eternal realm again. Never. So in this, it is a great call for me and you. So you and I have opportunity as eternal partakers to take, partake into everything that's associated with dad. Amen? As offsprings of who he is. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. All right, let's go a little further. Ephesians 3. Oh, happy days. Ephesians chapter 3. Starting at verse 1. Glory. <laughs> it 
Is everybody there? Let's speak it. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you had heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery, as I have briefly written already, by which you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit of his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ or his promise in the anointing. Because you can't overcome without the anointing. Through the gospel, which I became a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. So we are partakers of his promise in the anointing the eternal presence, again, the eternal presence, power, and truth, which is the anointing, by our cooperation. Remember, you can't partake in something unless you're cooperating with it. Amen? You may want to partake of it. You may want the benefits of somebody else partaking it, but you don't benefit from anybody else partaking it or cooperating it unless you do. Amen? Hmm. Hebrews 3. Eternal partakers, a person who's consumed, indulges, delights, cooperates, and joins in the activity of the eternal kingdom. That's where we are about our Father's business. Hebrews 3. I mean, um, yeah. Did I say Hebrews 3? Yes. Okay, good. In verse 6, I think, Hebrews 3, oh, 1, I'm sorry, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Did you bring your Holy Ghost eraser? Amen. Some things just don't change. Oh, happy days. Hebrews 3, verse 1. Therefore, my holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. So we have a heavenly calling. That means we, have a, we are partakers of none of his promises, but we are partakers of an eternal calling called a timeless mission. Because our mission is associated with a timeless operation. Why? Because we're trying to bring people out of time into a timeless realm. We're trying to rescue them from the temporary world. Amen? And then they have to be trained up and taught how to co cooperate so they can partake. Amen? Amen? See, this is where the problem is. Pe many people come to Jesus. Then they still live their own life. They're still living for themselves because they haven't learned how to partake yet. And they can't partake unless they cooperate. So they need to be trained up. And without training, how are you going to cooperate and partake? It's impossible. And they think they're going to go home. Hello? Hello? Let's go a little further. Praise God. Verse what? Three? For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who has built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ, as a son over his own house, whose house we are, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end, because we are the house. We're the house now. You know, we come together in the house of God, but it doesn't become the house of God until we come. 
Amen? 2 Peter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. Eternal partakers. Ooh. Uh, Second Peter chapter one, verse two. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power. His divine power is the anointing of Christ. What's the divine power for? To assist me and you in this temporary realm, to maintain a timeless position. Amen? It's to assist me and you to maintain a timeless position. So we need to be increasing in the knowledge and understanding of, of him. So as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature or the timeless nature of God Almighty. Having escaped, because without that you can't escape. Having escaped the corruption that is in this world through lust. Other than that, you can't escape. It's impossible. You know, you can go to church ten times a week and still not partake. Because without cooperation, there is no partake. Unless you're cooperating in the worship, unless you're cooperating, you're speaking the word, you're eating the word, unless you're cooperating. Cooperation is the key to everything. When the red, when, you stand, when you're at, driving a car and the light is red, you stop, right? If it's green, you go. If you don't cooperate, you in trouble. And so is the person that hit you. Or the one that you hit. Hello. Amen. Does everybody get this? His divine power is the anointing of Christ to assist us in this temporary realm and maintain a timeless position in, so that we can continue to increase in knowledge and understanding of him and partake in his timeless nature where justice and righteousness excel. This is the only way that you and I can escape the pollution and corruption of this world. It takes cooperation. And he left us someone to cooperate with. Holy Spirit. That's why he's called holy. Amen? In Colossians 1. Eternal partakers. Oh, glory. Glory. You know, as a B.C. individual one time, as a partaker of the world, indulging in the world, tasting the world, the end result was always painful. I mean, the end result was always painful. Emotional pain, physical pain, financial pain, pain in the butt. There was always pain. But as I began to partake of the eternal things, there's no more pain. Because Jesus takes the pain for us. Amen. See, we can exchange everything then. But in the world, we take care of it all of ourselves. But we don't take care of stinking nothing, actually. We try to. We think we're doing the right things that are best for us. But when you become an eternal partaker, you're not thinking of yourself anymore because there's someone who's thinking about you much more than you are. So I'd rather partake of the eternal things in a timeless generation, in a timeless realm, where I don't have to be concerned about me because he's more concerned about me than I am. 
and it makes it wonderful. Oh, happy days. <laughs> In verse 9, Colossians 1, 9. For this reason we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, fully pleasing him, and I'm saying fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be what? Partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has pre-qualified us because his expectation for me and you is to cooperate. Amen? He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. See, we're on probation. You've been sent in this world, you're on probation. We are tested citizenship. Amen? Because the last ones God created, rebuked, they left. <laughs> they, they, they forsook him. Lucifer and all of them, they forsook him. Amen? Now he's got a tested citizenship. So what you and I are doing here now is being eternally written. That either qualifies us or disqualifies us. Why? Whether we are cooperating to become partakers, amen, eternal partakers, or we are cooperating with the world to become worldly partakers, one or the other. Remember, who owns the fence? The devil, amen. You can't sit on a fence. The devil owns the fence. <laughs> Hallelujah. Giving thanks to the Father, now our Father, amen, all the time. We come into, as we are, he, he, look at, he's the only one that put on flesh. God the Father Almighty put on flesh, called himself Son. Came into this world so that he rescue his children that have been taken from him or willfully chose to walk away from him. Amen. He is now restoring his sons and daughters that were taken. They've been taken captive. And now he uses his body, who's me and you, to rescue. Is everybody okay? Hebrew 3. And it's not, oh, happy days are here again. It's, oh, happy days, because Jesus. Amen. <laughs> The world tried to copy my dad's song. Hebrews 3.12. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers, hello, of Christ, of his divine power, if we what? Hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice and obey, do not harden your hearts as in rebellion. For who having heard rebelled, indeed it was all, was it not all who came out of Egypt? Egypt means the world led by Moses. Now with whom was he angry 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose corpses fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they would not enter his rest, but those who did not obey? So we see that they could not enter because of what? Unbelief. So they weren't willing to cooperate or they could not partake then. 
Amen? So you and I must maintain a connection and a forward progress. I want to say that again. Maintain a connection and a forward progress. By cooperation as partakers all the way to the end. In Hebrews 12. Glory. God has a process for me and you in training. I said he has the process, not we. <laughs> Sometimes we don't like his process. <laughs> but I can tell you we don't have a choice. We either cooperate or we don't. Hebrews 12, verse 3. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. You have not yet resisted the bloodshed, striving against sin. In other words, man, you get to a point where, man, if something doesn't change, I'm going to kill somebody. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, my daughter, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. For nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him or corrected. Remember, correction brings protection. Amen? Amen. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens or corrects or spanks and scourges every son whom he receives, everyone. If you endure chastening, which is sometimes testing and challenging, God deals with you as sons. If you run, you're illegitimate. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten or correct? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons and daughters. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? Ooh. For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit that we may be what? Partakers of holiness, which is the character of Christ. Amen? Now, no chastening seems joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it so again the process of becoming an eternal partaker is chastening correcting which is listen when god chastens me and you and corrects us there's a refining why because he's trying to bring us more into his character he wants us to blend more in according to the eternal realm and not blend in anymore according to the physical realm. Amen? Philippians 1. Thank you, Lord. Philippians 1, in verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you with all joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of of Jesus Christ, but it takes our cooperation still. Just it is right for me to think of this of you all because I have you in my heart in as much as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. You all are partakers with me in grace. We are partakers of the plan of escape. 
As we become eternal partakers, we are also partakers of the plan of escape from here. Amen? How many of y'all want to live here forever? Snap, no. For God is my witness how greatly I long for you all with affection of Jesus Christ. Now this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in the knowledge and all discernment that you may approve the things that are excellent and that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, to the glory and the praise of God. I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all rest that my chains are in Christ. And most of the brethren in the Lord, have, having become confident by my chains, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Fear. So we're the partakers of the plan of escape from the deception of lust in this world and its evil influence, and we are able to escape the judgment and wrath of God, which will come to everyone who is only a partaker of the world. But if we're an eternal partaker, you and I are not under the wrath of God. Amen? The Almighty Creator, and He's created all mankind here. It doesn't matter who they're worshiping or whatever, God's still going to judge every single person. Nobody escapes. Ephesians 6. Eternal partakers. Woohoo! Ephesians 6, verse 10. Let's speak it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Now, did you put on your full armor today? You should know it by heart. Amen? Amen? Amen. That should be a priority. You got to know the full armor. You can't be looking in the Bible going, what's the full armor? And it's not in your closet. Amen? You, this is where you and I get to be eternal partakers in putting on the full armor of God. The world doesn't even know what it is. They run to the guns. They run to the swords. They run to the things of the world which can't protect them from spiritual possession. Amen? Put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand against all the trickery of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against the principalities, against the powers of darkness, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God. In other words, get dressed every day with the full armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. The battle of influence that rages the war against eternal partakers and worldly partakers is the present right now. There is a battle going on. Only the eternal partakers have victory and can advance. But that's where the powers of darkness come against and try to prevent. So they try to prevent eternal partakers, victory and advancement. And they prevent worldly partakers their way of escape. They try to prevent them. These lifeless entities are called demons. And I want to say that they are lifeless. They're lifeless spirits that influence and enter into individuals. These lifeless entities that hold, that take hold and possess human life forms. Why? To express themselves. If a man's got to dress like a woman and a woman's got to dress like a man, 
That is a lifeless entity that has entered that person. If a person is promoting abortion, that is definitely a lifeless entity that has entered that person. If a person is a rapist, a murderer, that is a lifeless entity that has entered that person. Why? Because it's taking life. So it is a lifeless entity that's taking an individual's life and preventing them from an eternal life. Amen? Does everybody understand this? This is what we call demons. These are evil spirits, but they are lifeless entities. And they promote damage and harm to an individual. They've come to take life, but the only way that they can express themselves is to take on human life. Somehow, some way, they enter and access that person into their soul. They take over their emotions. They take over their desires. They take over their thoughts. And they live for themselves instead of living for the king. Is everybody okay? They, they f express themselves. They have to feed themselves. And they promote their evil agenda by destroying the life of an, an individual with sin, sickness, and selfish pride. John 14. You know, if people could just see these spirits, they wouldn't want them in them. They wouldn't want them around them. <laughs> I'm seeing some really strange dressed people these days. Sheesh. And they're promoting these laws. You know, I, we, we put up a video about Sharia. If you get a chance, go to it. It's on Eternal Library. It's on a Facebook page of Eternal Library. Or, yeah, okay. It's about Sharia. There's this woman that gave her testimony who was brought up in Sharia law. And you know what? When you begin to see what these politicians are promoting, they're actually promoting Sharia law. The same thing that they were promised. People have no idea Iran, how Iran used to be. It used to be a Western nation. People didn't walk around underneath a dark garment hiding themselves. Women went to school, educated, were dry, had licenses until the uh, demon-dressed individual, who is he? Ayatollah. Ayatollah. Hallelujah. Came in and promised, he actually promised him free education, free this, free that. The place was run by a king and queen. Once this Ayatollah came in and took over and forced the king and queen out, all the things that they promised them free, just like what you're hearing right now, these um, demonic politicians promoting free, everything free, is the same thing he did. Then he took everything away from them and he put women under slavery and began to follow the Quran that promoted Muhammad who married a six-year-old child. You talk about child abuse. And then everyone at the age of nine gets a certificate. Every woman at the age of nine gets a certificate that says you are now a woman and you are now responsible and anyone can do anything they want with you. And that's what they're trying to do in this country. People have no idea what is going on. And these politicians are promoting what they call socialism. It's Sharia law. It's crazy. It's happening. I'm telling you, the body of Christ is the only one restraining, but they're still promoting these laws and, and so forth. And other parts of, the, of even the United States and other and, uh, uh, counties and stuff like that. They're promoting Sharia. Hallelujah. And women are out there. And the, the one woman that escaped and has given her testimony, she's been here. And, and her, her grandmother is the one that got her out of there. And she's been here about, I don't know, 10, 15 years now. 
And she's now preaching all over. She's a Christian now. And she's warning everyone and telling everyone and asking everyone to pray for all of those girls that are still taken captive and abused and beaten. She was so beaten one day, she went to a judge, and a judge told her to leave and go home and submit to her husband. See, you hear about murders all over, which many of them are not reported, A woman wanting to divorce their husbands that are involved in this, and the women are dead. They're mutilating the young girls. And, I mean, it's just crazy. Crazy. These are lifeless spirits in these individuals serving a lifeless deity. Oh, snap. John 14. So if you get a chance, please go and watch that. In verse 1. You know, one of the things this woman said, she says, it's amazing to me that all of these women are out there fighting for their freedom. She said, they're, you know, they're fighting for their freedom of rights. She goes, what? What are you fighting for? You have it all. <laughs> That's what she kept saying. She goes, you have no idea what you have. But as a Christian country, it isn't about man or female, male or female. We're all one. Amen? That's how God sees it. In verse 1, John 14, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going and how we can know the way. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for through me. So again, there's no way out except for through Jesus. If you had known me, you would have known my Father. And from now on you know him because you have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? And that must have been quite difficult for them. How can you be the Father? See, they didn't have the Holy Spirit yet. They were covered by the presence of Jesus. Amen? But they didn't have, the scales were still there. The scales were still on their heart. They could only figure out things physically, tangibly. They still had a hard time spiritually seeing the unseen. Jesus said, do not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. You know, Jehovah Witnesses, I was talking to one, they do not believe in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They just believe in Jehovah God, which actually means God. But they don't believe in the power. They, don't, they, have, they call it a force. They don't believe in heaven and hell. And all of these other things. Why? Because they're under a doctrine of deception. These are called doctrines of demons, or what we might call doctrines of lifeless entities. Amen? Verse 12. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he will, he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, who's the Holy Spirit, 
whom the world cannot receive. So those in partake in the uh, worldly cannot receive the eternal. Is everybody on it? Until you've changed heart and you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, now you can receive the sealer of the covenant promise known as the Holy Spirit who will empower you to partake, cooperate and partake of eternal things. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, they can't receive it because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Again, the worldly, <laughs> the worldly ones, the eternal, worldly partakers cannot receive the Holy Spirit until they are washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Mark 16. Or Matthew 16. I'm sorry. Matthew 16. Eternal partakers. And then one more scripture. Matthew 16. Oh, happy days. Verse 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do men say that I am? And they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Barjona answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that, that you are Peter, and on this rock, this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So you and I are partakers of the keys of authority. Amen? Those are keys of authority. But that means you cannot, that takes cooperation. You know, there are many believers who never even bound anything. They never even loosed anything. They never even cast out a devil. Yet they call themselves believers, but they're carriers of demons. Hallelujah. And let's close at Psalm 103. Lifeless entities in a human life body. It's the only way they can express themselves. Psalm 103, please. You know, it would be really nice if we just tell the whole world that they're being influenced by lifeless entities. <laughs> you know. Hallelujah. Verse 1. <laughs> Bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. How do we bless the Lord? Praise and worship out of our mouth. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his, all his benefits. Why? If you're an eternal partaker, then you have eternal benefits. Who forgives your iniquities. Praise God. Who heals your diseases. You got life insurance. Amen. Who redeems your life. Yeah, here it is, life insurance. From destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Eternal partakers with benefits. Let me tell you, all things will work to the good as long as you continue to cooperate. But no cooperation brings no partation. 
Amen. You cannot partake if you don't cooperate. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let the seed of revelation be imparted in us and protected by the blood and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. We thank you, Father, for being a dad and a good dad to us. Even when we were boneheads, you were still there. Thank you for never giving up on us. Now let's never give up on you. In Jesus' name.